<clears throat> All right, guys, how are you? All good. <laughs> um, yes, Belfast Boxing and Blues, please. <laughs> so what's going on, guys? Um, as you know, Anthony Joshua got knocked out by Daniel Dubois. Which was quite satisfying, wasn't it? It was something different, like. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was brilliant. Uh, it was just fantastic. It was very good. It's a bit fucking drab in here, isn't it? It's not quite... <laughs> you would expect, I don't know, a couple of emojis or something here. Something like that probably might help. But um, anyway, regardless of that case, you know, uh, concerning boxing and, and, and boxing news and... You know, they say boxing is a great metaphor for life. I just think that's bullshit. But, um, I do enjoy a good scrap. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to talk about it, man. We've got to talk about it. You know, I've watched the fight in pieces. Um, because I don't really get a 30 minute stretch to myself, you know. Um, throughout the working day. Well, uh, Anthony Joshua looked very trepidatious, you know, standing across the ring when they were doing all the pageantry and all the fucking wee songs and stuff. You know, you had your man there, Turkey El Sheikh, sang the fucking Saudi Arabian National Anthem and stuff like that. It was very good. Um, But you could see, absolutely, that, you know, AJ... It was almost like it was preordained, you know, in his eyes. He was like, <laughs> well, what am I walking into here? You know what I mean? And uh, your other man, uh, Daniel Dubois, well, he, 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 he believed, like, he absolutely believed. And, you know, and you kind of rate him for that reason alone, because he believed. You know what I mean? It's a, delusion is a skill. You know what I mean? It's something to be celebrated. Uh, especially when you can finish the job. You know, knock them spark out with right hand or a left. Sometimes you might want to use your left. Um, yeah, but no, in all seriousness, guys, absolute frenetic action, you know. I thought it was brilliant. It was very good. Um, who else was there? Yes, Chris Eubank Jr. was on uh, George Groves uh, being interviewed for about 15 minutes. <laughs> and, like, obviously, uh, you know, George Groves battered him in the uh, World Super Series. It was just pre Saudi involvement. You know, it was coming from a different direction then. So, uh, you know, Groves had him there. Groves was able to talk to him in a way and, and get a certain type of fucking vibe out of uh, Eubank Jr. that other reporters might not have been able to. So, I mean, he was... <laughs> the thing was, with, with, with uh, it was a far cry from the press conference the other day when, when Eubank Jr. came out and he was talking all sorts of smack, slagging this, slagging that, you know what I mean? Um... He was very humble, you know, and very natural, and, uh, because he couldn't help but be. And he was being asked very exact questions, like what what was the highest he had weighed, you know, recently and stuff like that. And he had that he had the answer. He didn't try to duck or dodge it at all. He just straight up gave him the answer after a little bit of hemming and hawing, you know. So that's all there is to it, really. But um. I thought it was good, you know, I thought it was good to see that side of Eubanks, you know, it's just something different. But yeah, getting back to the fight, uh, you know, uh, your man, Anthony Joshua, he held his hands too low, in my opinion, for the first couple of rounds. <laughs> he was just shipping shots and shipping shots. He was fit to see them coming, but it, it didn't occur to him to lift his hands. Uh, or trying to deflect a block or parry a shot. No, he just was dipping back and riding them as best he could, but he was eating them quite handily, you know. Um, 
no pun intended. But uh, then what happened, I suppose, after that, into the third round, maybe into the fourth round, he, he started to have his hands up. Rather than this, he was but he was getting the hands all around him because he, he, he knew what was happening. He knew what Dubois was laying on him. Um, and he wasn't quite fit to keep up with it. There was a wee bit of... He was throwing counter shots, but they were anticipation shots. You know, he was hoping for a, a, the, the hole to appear in, uh, in Dubois' defence, but it didn't quite happen. He kept doing that and doing that. You know, he was throwing the uppercuts a wee bit too tight and close in, the same with the with the right hands and stuff like that. And we, when he did eventually get to the point in the fifth round where he was loading up and he was putting it on Dubois, he was throwing single right hand, Look, take a look again. Single right hand. Look, there was none of this, you know, combination punching. And he must have sort of got happy off of the success that he was having with that right hand, because he he threw one and left the chin out, and he he got that spark out, you know. And um, I I thought he did well. AJ, I thought it was a good performance. Um, all things uh, considered. You know, and well done, Dubois. He kept his hands up, <laughs> and he took advantage of uh, all of AJ's defects. He he got stuck in. He wasn't messing about. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't him and hand. He was straight in there, and he was getting the thing done, like. So I guess that's a lesson to us all, <laughs> you know, to get the job done, you know what I mean? That's really all there is to say, you know, except, um, so it was the fucking, uh, what do you call it, anniversary, like 20th anniversary or something of Bernard Hopkins, uh, Tito Trinidad. And I think it was one of the channels, one of those good channels, Boxing Life, I think it might be, Scottish fella. I think he's Scottish fella. Um, does these uh, breakdowns of fights and great clips and everything. It was fantastic. But uh, he did a whole commemoration <laughs> video of it. It was really good. Um, with the build-up, the main game was the throwing down of the flag. Like, I mean... Well, Bernard Hopkins <laughs> would stop at nothing, like you know what I mean. He doesn't. He doesn't care. Like he's 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 gonna try everything and anything. And then the nine eleven thing happened, and that you know was what it was. And he sort of was stood there as the last bastion of uh, you know freedom or something like that. And he got in there and he done the job, and it was a lovely performance, you know. And that was probably the performance for me that. Got me to like Bernard Hopkins, you know, not as a person, <laughs> so much, just the respect, you know, as a fighter, um, and appreciation of his talents, you know, what 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 the guy can do, um, it was clinical, absolutely clinical, but that's all there is to say, guys, you know, Belfast boxing on blues, and you know, do it if you like from there on.